some women have DM'd me or emailed me telling me, you know, they're so devastated that um, they were diagnosed with this and they don't know what to do. There is a way of living with PCOS. I'm living a very normal life. It is definitely possible. And now I'm expecting my second child despite three doctors telling me that it was going to be difficult, if not impossible for me to get pregnant. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my tips and my steps to getting pregnant with PCOS naturally. Many of you already know that I am currently expecting my second child. So I'm going to be sharing with you just some tips and some steps that I took in order to prepare myself and my body to conceive naturally. Before I get into anything, I am not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. So what I'm sharing with you is just from my own experience, my diagnosis, what happened to me. It is all personal accounts. Before I get into this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel channel hit the bell below and please give me a follow on my social media platforms I think it was last year I shared that I have PCOS so I, I shared my entire story from my symptoms to my final diagnosis and everything in another video so please check it out here I believe I have been living with PCOS for almost 20 years most of that undiagnosed I've been living with it knowingly for seven years now and that was three years before I got pregnant with my first child. By the fifth doctor, I finally got diagnosed with PCOS. After my diagnosis, there were three different doctors who I saw that told me that it is going to be difficult for me to fall pregnant naturally. The doctor that I did stick to, he was the one who was very hopeful about it. He was the one who managed, helped me manage and treat my symptoms so that it would increase my chances of conceiving naturally. So these are three steps that I took to increase my fertility, basically up my chances before, you know, any kind of medical intervention was, was needed basically. Everyone's situation is also different. There are some women who suffer from different levels of uh, PCOS. Some are more severe from the outset. Some are maybe moderate and then some are maybe light. So I just want to just put that out there as well. The first step before anything is to get checked. You can suspect that you might have it, but the only way that you can know for sure is if you have a doctor or medical professional check you out. So for me, how that looked like was that my doctor, you know, heard heard my story. So after hearing my symptoms, he's like, okay, this does sound like, you know, a typical case of PCOS, but I am going to run some tests. So he ran um, blood test to actually check my hormones. You know, when you get checked, you need to start off with something, have a baseline so that, you know, when you go for any follow-up visits, you're able to compare your levels um, to the previous visit or the first visit and see if you've improved and if they need to give you anything to help you with your hormones, for example, they would only know that if they can actually start off with, okay, what are you and where are you currently now? On the same day, he also uh, did an ultrasound to actually look at what's happening in my womb and my ovaries. He saw and he showed me all of these cysts, like clustered around my ovaries. He did give me a heads up that even in normal ovaries, it's perfectly normal to have cysts. They're not necessarily a bad thing. So after all of that, my blood test combined with my symptoms, combined with the ultrasound that he did on my ovaries. So he concluded that, yeah, you, you have PCOS. At that point, from what I remember, my androgen levels were out of control, okay? They were really, really high. My testosterone wasn't as high as my androgens, but they were still quite high. At that point, he was able to see, okay, this is what we're dealing with. So he was able to prescribe to me um, you know, my medication and everything. So that's why it's really important to just get checked. This is the time when you should really ask the doctor questions, no matter how stupid they, they, you think that they are. That's something that I've really learned in this whole journey is that there are doctors and healthcare professionals sometimes out there who kind of assume that we understand what they're talking about because it's normal jargon for them. But for you, the, the normal person is like, I don't know what that means. When they say, okay, your your cortisol levels are very low. It's like, okay, but what does that mean? If you don't know what cortisol is, you don't know how it affects you or androgens, you don't know what how exactly do androgens work and how are they 
contributing to my fertility? All of those questions, use that time to ask them those questions. The doctor that I uh, go to and I have recommended to some of you out there who have asked me, he is a specialist. He is excellent at what he does, but he is very expensive. He's very hard to get an appointment with. I made sure that when I saw him, I, I came with my questions. I went there with Kev as well, just in case that I missed something. So I think that's always a good thing as well as an extra tip. Go with someone who you trust. Go with someone who you know is going to be able to support you. Try and go with your husband or if you're partnered up, go with them so that they can also understand because what ends up happening with PCOS and a lot of these um, fertility issues is not going to affect just you. It is going to affect him as well, especially if you're trying to get pregnant. He needs to also understand what's happening to you even if it's on a sort of simple level. That definitely helped for me, for Kev, to understand what's happening in my body and also to support me when I had to make lifestyle changes. It wasn't just a thing of, oh, she just wants to eat different because she wants to lose weight. It was like, no, I need to eat differently because otherwise it is going to affect my fertility and basic running of my body. Once you have that baseline, you, can, you actually have something to compare it to. The next time you see the doctor, uh, he has something to compare it to as well. And he can say, okay, you're doing really well here, but you know, this place isn't so great. Maybe I can change the medication that you're on, for example. So I definitely recommend that that's where you start. Okay, now the second step is once you know your level is to actually start preparing your body. I think as young women, we kind of, before we even start trying for a baby, a lot of us sort of assume that everything's okay. And then we start getting into like problems and trying to almost backtrack and say, okay, but what's actually wrong? And I'm not saying that that's the wrong thing. For me, I could feel that something wasn't quite right in my body and I stuck with it and I followed through with it. Only because of that did I end up getting the right diagnosis and I knew what was going on in my body. So I really encourage you just to get a checkup if you can. It's one thing sort of knowing that you have or you suspect that you have something, but now you're going into it and you haven't necessarily prepared your body for it. PCOS is one of those conditions, as with I'm sure a lot of other conditions, it'll take time for your body to kind of like readjust, um, to get back to normal. It's not like a quick fix kind of thing. I'm glad that I was diagnosed when I was 27. We weren't planning on having kids then. We wanted to first, you know, get married, we wanted to do a whole bunch of other things and then start trying for a baby. I had basically about three years essentially to kind of get my body right. So what I did was I changed my diet. I did do a whole video on PCOS diet and what I eat and what I've replaced certain things with, etc. So please check out my PCOS diet video as well. Essentially what you eat really affects your body. It affects your hormones. It affects your insulin levels. And that's something that is very, very important when it comes to PCOS. And that is one massive massive thing that um that i changed and that's why having my husband present with me and and a partner with me along this journey was really important because we eat together <laughs> So we both changed our our diet. After I'd say maybe a couple of months, I could actually even feel it. Even before I went to the doctor, I could actually feel that my body was like responding to this new food and this new lifestyle. There's a great PCOS diet book that I still refer to sometimes for recipes and all of that. I will put the link to that book in the description box below. Okay, and then the other way that you can prepare your body is by doing regular exercise. This is something that I didn't really take that seriously. Again, it's it's preparing your body, making sure that it's the healthiest it can be, moderate to, you know, like high intensity exercise. Several times a week will do wonders for you, for your mood, for your hormones, everything. Like it's just an all around thing. If you were like me, I didn't, I didn't do exercise. <laughs> after school, I just kind of stopped after, after university, but I eased into it. I started off going maybe once a week to the gym and then I went twice a week. And then it became a thing where I was like, if I don't exercise, I feel terrible. I think a lot of people, they, they think of the gym, for example, when I say, yeah, I'm going to gym, they think, I'm going to do like push-ups and weights and stuff. And if that's for you, great. But if it's not, like it wasn't for me, I joined dance classes. So that was something that I genuinely enjoyed. I didn't feel like I was actually exercising because if you're, again, like me, if you're like, I actually 
feel like I'm exercising now and I and I don't enjoy it, then try and do something that doesn't quite feel like it's exercise, but you are getting exercise. And then the last thing I did to prepare for my body, which is obviously you can't do on your own. You have to have your doctor to advise you and to prescribe things for you but it was helping to manage my hormones. So my doctor prescribed a specific pill that made sense with what was going on in my body. Different pills have different like dosages of hormones. If your estrogen is too high and then you get like an estrogen high pill, then that won't work, right? In terms of medication, I was on the pill as well as some vitamin supplements. My cortisol levels were very, very low. My vitamin D was extremely low as well. So he prescribed those uh, supplements for me so essentially my doctor's entire objective and everything was not necessarily only to get me to be able to conceive especially because we weren't at that stage yet that we were trying to conceive he was just like let's get your body healthy let's get it to you know a sort of more normal level and then we can see what happens from there and then the last thing is preparing my mind a lot of people still really underestimate the power of the mind basically if you have p cause you're more likely to suffer from anxiety depression so in knowing that it's really important to make sure that your mental health is okay I am a highly stressed person I uh, suffer from anxiety and everything I didn't even realize that that was a possible symptom of PCOS but it, it is so it makes a lot of sense knowing that now as to why I am the way I am. Definitely reduce unnecessary stress. If you can remove it, then remove it. If you can't, then you need to learn how to manage it better. Work could be a, an example. Family can be another example of stresses that, you know, we can't really do much about, but we can maybe like change our perspective on that particular trigger. If and when the time comes that you are going to start, you know, trying for a baby and conceiving for a child, it can start getting very stressful if you're not conceiving as soon as you thought you would or that you should have it's almost like preparing yourself for that possibility if you're stressed it affects your body it could end up affecting your fertility all right so those are my three steps to getting pregnant with PCOS naturally I repeated these same steps before I conceived with now my second child as well so I'd say maybe about a year and a half after I had Kai I, I weaned him off my breast, I went back onto my treatment, I was doing exercise and then fast forward to last year when I got off the pill, I got off the pill in I think it was August or September, I had been going to my doctor just to monitor my levels and everything and he was like okay cool you look like you're gonna be okay let's see what happens this time. <laughs> if you wanna check that out and how I got pregnant and when I found out check out that video. So again I know that obviously everybody has different levels but I just wanted to just give you some hope find a doctor who knows what they're doing I really encourage you to do research on your own as well make sure it's a credible source and yeah I wish you all the best please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or found it helpful send it on share it with someone who you know might have PCOS or you know has PCOS let me know if you uh, have been diagnosed with PCOS if you've been living with PCOS if you have any other tips that you'd like to share those are just my top three if you have any questions please drop Drop them in a comment follow me on my social media if you haven't already as always please remember to subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell below so you get notifications on all of my videos and while you're here watch some of my other videos and yeah i will see you in the next video